Internet, you listening to the Talk of Texture podcast, sponsored by Rode Microphones, R-O-D-E dot com. Log on to R-O-D-E dot com and learn about professional broadcast quality microphones and audio equipment manufactured by Rode, R-O-D-E dot com, in your ear holes. Internet, oh shoot, what's going on, Internet? Yeah. yeah. Oh, this is the podcast that you be fucking with. Shouts to everyone at Fucks is with us. Talk a texture. Here we we got the spaceship fired up. Y'all remember the spaceship? Yes. Producer A King here in the building. What's good? Brother Chris working on his his equipment. <laughs> this guy. Touching your equipment with both hands. Yeah. How you doing, balls, brother balls. Chris? No, nah, no, nah, you ain't got a mic. I know. So I, but I'm saying, how you doing? Nah. And you don't have a mic? So <laughs> okay. Damn. Brother Chris is good. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Playing with your equipment with no mic. Yeah, you changing a lot of people's lives out here with, Any? The, with this camera work. <laughs> Yeah. See you out here, bro. Doing God's work. 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 Yeah, if you didn't get called to the mic, you can't touch the mic. Don't touch the mic. All right. All right. Good to see you, though, brother Chris. Good to see you. Talking text, good to see you. Joy. Yes, sir. Always good to see you. Good to be here. Good to be seen. Yes. Yes. Summer dress swag. I mean, mm. internet Joy nah, came nah, in. Nah, Joy nah. the Great came in with a Just Blaze leather jacket on. You see it? Just Blaze quality. <laughs> yeah. You know, what I mean, Lux. Like, that was that was a young calf. That was that was a calf actually raised to make a leather jacket. Right. <laughs> so don't feel no kind of way about that calf. Don't be sad for that. That calf's one job was to make the most butteriest yeah. leather jacket. This is a. Uh, and the calf did that. My polo, my polo yeah. leather. Take your That's time. Really take your time. Take your time. Is that, is that a? Hold on a second. I'm looking at the zipper pulls. That don't look like polo. Yes. It is. Mm. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let she me got see. a Michael Jack her, her Janet. Let me see. Let me see. Internet. She got her Janet. He, 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 he pulling everybody tags today, Joe. On Joy the Great. Polo and see how hard she's stunning. Denim Supply. Okay, okay, okay. Denim Supply. All right. Internet. Denim Supply. Internet. What Joy the Great pulled out was a Denim and Supply. Okay. So what she should have said is the jacket is Ralph Lauren. It's not Polo. Oh, That's still. It's Ralph, though. It's Ralph. It's Ralph. It's Ralph. But as I said, the leather, the leather is butter. <laughs> we passing this around, <laughs> <laughs> right? It's, 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 it's like, yo, you touch this jacket, you got instant good luck, G. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Okay. And I got played a lot of it. I got played a lot of it. Good lot. to see you. I fuck with instant good luck. Yeah, I played a lot of it. Fuck Jesus, fuck Jesus, fuck I didn't call you to the mic yet. Don't talk until you, until you get called to the mic. Seriously. <laughs> yeah, no glasses. It's, All right. It's groovy though. Uh-huh. He's yeah. smooth today. Yeah. No, no. I mean, he just graduated. He deserves groovy glasses for graduating. Yeah. Yeah, you know? oh. I just graduated. Salud. Yeah. Yeah. Congrats, brother. Yeah. 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 I got, no, I got an English that. major. We still, we still didn't ask you to speak yet, buggy. <laughs> buggy is you stay coming late. Uh, you stay distracted, but it's good to see you, though. I'm glad we had he, you here. He was early today, though. No, he was... On time? He was buggy Yeezus. G-Y. You're How rude. You doing, brother? I'm doing well, man. I'm having a good day. It's been a, you know... Getting into the summer, still not, you know, fully in it, but okay. I'm enjoying it, man. Like like you said, getting these fits off, right? Man, you're looking good, man. You're looking like, 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 definitely on some, like, you know, respectable, like, someone could bring you home. Hey, I'm, I'm cool. Like, <laughs> greetings. Hi. Yeah. Like, how, how are you? How are you doing today, I mean, madam? How fix, are you doing, you sir? Gotta, you got to fix your cat. Your cap turned backwards, but yeah. I understand that's because you went with us hanging out. I'm cooling out. I like your cat, man. What's, what you got I mean, going? Hold on for a second, man. I'm, I'm talking about me. <laughs> okay, I was gonna flip it back. I'm like, man, you got you got it going. You, okay, the fresh that's a bit. That's a bit. That's a bit. Barkies, good to see you, Barkies. What up? Congratulations, my man. Thank you. I appreciate that, Dallas. Oh man, listen. And now, you, and now you're gonna you're gonna take the summer to. to Chill out for a while, or you're gonna get right back. Well, I'm gonna it. take more than just the summer. Um, the summer I'm working, okay. I'm coaching tennis, uh, and doing a bunch of other things. But um, I'm getting back into school uh, next academic year. I'm gonna be going to law school. Right, you're going to law school. Right, exactly, Jenkins exactly, Jenkins. exactly. They always Jenkins hire. Jenkins it's have, official. They yeah. always hire. Jenkins, Jenkins will have a, a new intern. Soon, good paralegal. To, <laughs> good to see you, buggy. He's like you about to take Internet's, off. Internet tonight. Hey. We got a young man with us who is poor. He's poised to. He's poised to do some important things inside music, and I'm excited to talk with him because just finding out about him, his background is so deep mm. and it's so layered that like this is what the game be asking for. You know, I don't want to put no other artist's work on top of you. Appreciate pause, it. Because you're going to do your own thing. But Bobby Sessions, good to have you here with us tonight. Good you're, to be here. Yeah. 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 
you're, Thanks for having me on your platform. Yeah. Dope, dope, dope. Bobby, I mean, you're doing it uh, big right now. You're inside one of the big buildings in Midtown mm -hmm. that make music. Legendary. All right. Yeah. Legendary. All right. I mean, the that's, of life. Yeah. That, that's that's a that's a big step for a young artist for somebody who's you know poised to put themselves in front of people. Now you could have chosen the simple easy route to making music, yeah, to creating content, but instead you 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 got ill with it. Yeah, I have a responsibility. It would have been so easy with this new platform to go up and talk my shit, but I think um, it's important to make music that reflects the times, and I have a responsibility to do that with this platform that I've been blessed with. That's crazy. Yeah. That's, That's crazy. crazy. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. refreshing. That's crazy. Like, internet, I Yo. feel like we could just end the, the podcast right now. <laughs> <laughs> On that. Seriously. On that. You just closed it down right there, but I'll tell you what. Now let's get it more open. Mm -hmm. um, tell me about your background. I mean, like, like... Are, you're more than just a hip hop baby. Yeah, I mean, I listened to uh, a bunch of different music. My dad was a, a jazz enthusiast, so he was playing all kind of straight ahead jazz, acid jazz, like all around the house every day. Um, my mom was in the Wendy Houston and Erica Badu and, and a bunch of neo soul music. And hip hop was something that uh, we'd go to school. And so I was like, yo, my parents won't let me listen to this. Have you heard this? And the, the whole thing to sneak and listen to mm -hmm. uh, sneak and listen to hip hop. So I've heard a bunch of different kind of music and I draw from all genres of music. And I think that's why my approach is different than the average MC. That's dope, too. I mean, you got all you got all those different textured musical backgrounds. Yeah. But then content wise, I, I'm like, man, does this does this young man know what he's doing when he's talking this hard? Yeah. And talking is truthful? I mean, I've done my research. Like, everything I say can be fact-checked. Bro, you're completely against this era right now. This is the <laughs> era of no fact-checking. Right. <laughs> right. I mean... You a complete outlier. You, you gotta couldn't, be. You couldn't, just be, you couldn't just fit in. You, you couldn't just pop pills or put fur on a car wheel. It's hard to stand out in a crowd. Mm, dig that. Yeah. Dig that when everyone's trying to do the same thing. Right. The last video I saw from you... The title is Like Me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that shit. Well, understand also the, the era that we're in as a society. And I see music now before I hear it. Mm -hmm. I mean, plus I walk around with 3D glasses on anyway. So good shit look three times a day. <laughs> I feel you. I'm from the DDD. That's what we call Dallas. The DDD. The podcast is over right now. <laughs> they don't have to hear the rest of the shit we about to say. <laughs> yeah. The video like me is so dope. Dope. Thank you. Provocative. You said it. Hard. Layered. That's your vision? Yes. Um, we want to push the boundaries I feel like um, the video was put together the director's name Jeremy Biggers um, he's a, one of the best creatives in the country he's Dallas based um, and with the help of him uh, and my manager J Dot, who also founded High Standards we all came together put the video together and we wanted a powerful piece of content to get people to think and to spark dialogue and I think we did a good job of that yeah no question it, I mean it, it's, it's an ill ill video appreciate that man yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't even want to ask the budget because it, it, the way it came off, it came off almost like y'all, y'all niggas have had someone flown in from Hollywood. Let's just roll with that. Right. <laughs> Let's roll with that. Yeah, yeah, I love that. I love that. I love that. But but the 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 theme in, in the lyrics, you're, you're very challenging. Yeah. I think, um, you know, with the, the first verse is detailing uh, slavery. Well, the whole song in general is, is painting the correlation between slavery and today and how you think that ha that has nothing to do with today and it has everything to do with today. Back in the day, a slave catcher, they had like a badge. You look at a cop badge, it's the same badge. It's literally the same badge. You just take slave catcher off of it and put police. It's the same thing. Um, and I wanted to, in the first verse when I'm rapping fast and you hear a bunch of different tones, it represents when a slave is running away on the plantation, how frantic that moment is, like the anxiety of running away, knowing if you trip on a rock, if you get tired, you get caught, you're going to get hung, you're going to die. Like, and I really wanted to take it there and paint that picture. And then with the second verse in the video where we did the role reversal with me chasing a white cop down the street. And you get to see the white cop looking back real scared, fearing for his life. And I got my knee in his back rapping into the camera and he's helpless and nobody's coming to save him. 
Um, and, and, if you, and if you look in the video, it's a part where the cop goes, I can't breathe mm. in the video. Like, we really wanted to take it there. And I think a role reversal is a good strategy to get people to see a perspective that they would, norm- that they would normally dismiss. Mm. You know? Yeah. Incidents, the podcast is over right now. He just trying to drop jewels. Shut it down again. <laughs> just dropping jewels every time he's told. That is, again, like I said, you're, you're challenging us. And because we see music now before we hear it, you're giving us the visual that a lot of us, we like to forget, ignore, sure. deny, yeah, and just be entertained. You know what I mean? Just nod head, snap fingers, yeah. diddy bop. I, I think uh, it'll be my job to restore balance. Like, there's... Because you need some entertainment, entertaining music because shit is fucked up. And it's good sometimes to have an hour or two hours where you're dancing or doing whatever to just enjoy life. But at the same time, um, it can be irresponsible if every artist is just turning away from, like, somebody's getting shot right next to you. You know, they got this, I heard this, somebody had something like, well, what makes you qualified to speak on this or that? It's like, oh, my my, my fat, my fault, bro, I should have got shot in the head and, and died and I should have came back to life and then cut the album then would I have right. enough credibility then like it's crazy so um, like I said we got a responsibility and we're gonna continue to push the the boundaries with all the content that we wanna put out and um, that's just what it is damn uh, folks like myself are gonna be getting to know you you know from this point forward tell me something about where you came you came up in Dallas, Texas yeah I was telling you earlier, my, my visit to Dallas was that Dallas was hotter than a mug. Yeah, Dallas is really hot. It's hot right now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you had a little heat wave last couple of weeks, right? Like 100, 100 We've, We had a heat wave, like, <laughs> for, like, 300 years. <laughs> <laughs> like, this shit is fucking hot. <laughs> it's, it's yeah. yeah shit, shit definitely been hot since before the, the space wave. The wave, need the wave to crash. Like, I need some air, bro. I need slushies on deck, something. <laughs> yeah, man, something. Yeah. I, f- I flew through Dallas one time. I went to Grapevine, too. Um, okay. Yeah, it was hot as fuck, but it was not as bad as Roswell, New Mexico. Uh, I can believe that. You get off the plane there, and it's just like death. Yeah. Mm. Why would you go to Roswell? My parents were going to send me to New Mexico Military Institute. Mm. Oh, damn. They were going to send you to, to go get into the spaceship? <laughs> I, I told that spaceship I couldn't make it. Nah, that's <laughs> that's right. You have been smoking with the alien. Yeah. The <laughs> so wait, so you, you're based out of Dallas. Yeah. When you were independent, when you 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 were starting your own label up, what what made you stay based out of Dallas instead of moving like to one of the bigger markets like New York, Atlanta, LA? It'd been. Like, what was so important about Dallas that made you want to do that there? Two things in particular. One, um, I'm real big on, since I've been studying history, still continuing to study history, um, I wanted to create history and be a part of history. And Dallas doesn't have a history of having a bunch of artists that's come up through that scene and then sign with a major label of have a bunch of global, national, even regional success. Um, So I wanted... I saw that as an opportunity to do that. So that was my goal from the jump. And then once I linked with my manager, J-Dot, who founded High Standards, he reassured me that we could do it right here. Like, mm-hmm. don't don't use that as an excuse to go somewhere. Let, let's do it right here and then create a blueprint for other artists coming up to follow suit. And I'm mm-hmm. glad we stuck to our guns and did that. Yeah, it sounds dope because, like, even when you were talking about your director, you said your, di- your director was based out of Dallas, director too. So Dallas, like the- it was shot in Dallas, producers Dallas, like, everything was Dallas that's, still. That's so necessary. We didn't switch like up once we local. got the deal and start working on all these people. We still kept it Dallas, and that was our mission. We said it would be, and it's funny, people say, oh, I'm a, you know, we're going to look out for all y'all, and then when you get the deal, it's like, bye, fuck you. <laughs> like, <laughs> we, we stuck to what it was, and we're going to continue to do that. Dallas is one of the biggest markets in the world. Yeah. There's no opinion in that. That's yeah. just what it is. And, and as far as like the scene it's one of the best scenes in the world and I think that's what a lot of people you won't know that until you go though mm-hmm. you know it's just like it could be some diamonds under this rug but if you don't know that you'll be like oh it's just a regular floor like right. that's what Dallas is you say but, you gotta you gotta also you gotta 
peel back the layers. You got to go find it. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. If you know, you know. Oh, but listen, I, I went to Kickstarter oh. years ago in, in Dallas. I mean, a sneaker convention, an independent sneaker convention that. What year? When, Dallas and you Dallas? said last year? Or what no, Dallas it wasn't was last year. It was, it was, man, I had to go back and look. I'm going to burn out, but I remember I, okay. I went with Sean Price. Sean Price and, and, and Guilty Simpson and, and, um, and Black Milk. Oh, yeah, Sean Milk. Price, yeah. yeah the hot, they, they Black Milk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The hot. Yeah, they did a random max set inside Kixpo. Nice. But I mean, they had the they had uh, the Texas Stadium. Yeah. For Kixpo. Yeah. Wow. It was that, wild. That shit is and Texas Stadium is like. I think I might been. I might have been, was that 2011 maybe. I probably 2011. Yeah, I was at that one. Yeah. Yeah, probably. Yeah. I mean, listen, dope. Yeah, man, it was dope. Dope, 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 dope. So I mean, but I mean, Dallas still has you still have legacy hip hop artists. You still have one of the greatest who. D.O.C. Yeah, West yeah. Dallas. Yeah. Like, they always... He'll never, ever get to, to be in the top five mm-hmm. because his career was cut short from the accident. Sure. But the rap... But if you know, you know. Right. You know, you know. He yeah. taught Snoop Dogg how to rap. Yeah, if mm-hmm. you know, you know. And that came from Snoop Dogg. So. If you know, you know. Yeah. All right, so so Dallas. and and But now you, you, you get connected with this big building here. Mm-hmm. And I mean this in, this incredible hub with with a legacy, of, you know of of putting people all around the globe. Yeah, you're challenging, and you're gonna be, I mean you're gonna be challenging, at other places too, not just here in the states. Mm-hmm. Because you're, you're challenging norms and you're challenging the status quo globally. Yeah, that's that's what hip hop is like, and I feel like. Um it kind of alleviated the pressure of like, oh, you know, my, my music's so controversial, how people going to respond to it, but there's examples of this this work, Public Enemy that work, NWA that work. Um, and this is the same thing. I'm, I'm talking about what's happening. That's, that's why it's so crazy. That's why it makes you uncomfortable because you know it's true. Mm. Um, and I have a responsibility to say it, and I'm not, I'm not a people pleaser kind of person. Like, if you love it, cool. If you hate it, cool. As long as I can sleep at night, I'm good. Mm. Yeah. Dig it. Dig yeah. it. I'm, I'm going to add something to what you had said earlier, is how you're making a blueprint. I want you to make a master plan. And I'm going to tell you why. The blueprint is a copy of a master plan. All right? You take the master plan and you put it over this transparency paper that, that gets activated when you put it through the developer. But the master plan holds all the information. Blueprint is the copy. Sometimes lines, numbers get missed. Yeah. All right, thinking of a master plan, sometimes it ain't nothing but sweat inside your hand. That's the pen. Bars. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Tell them. But I don't write rhymes. I don't write rhymes. Take it back. I'm still that. bars. That was a Drop rock gem. gem. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Hey, I don't, I don't write rhymes. I don't write Drop rhymes. Drop a gem on but, but again, but again, no, no, good to have you here. Good to have you here. Good because, to be here. You know, you, you got a bag of gems already, man, and, and you're about to spread them all over the world. Yeah, man. I'm hot for that. Thank I'm you. I'm definitely hot for that. Thank you. Hot for that. So, again, I, I want to get back into the video. Um... And and just how dope it is, and how how visually arresting it is. Do you think do you think you could put together a video album? Mm. Would you would you would you consider that project? Yeah, I would. Mm-hmm. I think it's a great idea. I know I could do that okay. for sure. Yeah. Okay, because I feel like music currently gets seen before it even gets heard. And I mean, one of the examples I think of is, is the Childish Gambino video. Yeah, this is America. Right. Yeah. And if you heard the song by itself, would would you connect to it? But the song along with the video. Video is phenomenal. Right. Yeah. Right. The song along with the video, it all made sense. Yeah, it did. You know, what I mean, it all made sense. So it's it's just it's interesting to me now how people you know who are thinking out of the box. Yeah. Are realizing like, all right. I don't have to hold people's eyes hostage yeah. for 20 minutes. Yeah. I can take a little four minute, little five minute. And I, I mean, listen, all praise to Michael Jackson, who would take a little seven minute music video and make that shit epic. But who got that kind of bread now? You know I mean, who got that Michael Jackson bread right now? Shit. You don't get that Shimon money. Yeah. <laughs> you know, to wear one white glove. Hey man, that man you was know. jaffing the whole time. Snap, moonwalk, ad libs. When I listen to white socks, <laughs> black shoes. When I listen to this, summer Kill, stuff, he killed it. We talked a little earlier um, about influences, and I and you kind of blew my mind because as an MC, I expect you to tell me, oh, my influences are these MCs, these artists, these rappers. Yeah. 
but you told me influences to you that were like comedians yeah um george carlin chris rock eddie griffin dave mm-hmm. chappelle um jerry seinfeld bernie mack richard pryor um the greats yeah even like newer guys now um anthony jesselnick um Hannibal Barris is, is cool. Yeah, so um, yeah, he's, he's dope. He's dope. Um, Tracy Morgan still funny. <laughs> yeah, he, he he's, fell off, right? Yo, he caught the bag. Um, the last don't, 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 no, no, no. Hey, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll put respect on. No, no, I'm shooting. I'm shooting at, I'm shooting at Tracy. <laughs> no, that's all good. No, he, he a legend. Like Kevin Hart. I, I respect the hell out of Kevin Hart. Yeah, real talk. Like, I, I kind of view it like I, I've, I've heard a lot of criticism of him. I kind of see it like this. Like, you know, the balls. Yeah. You need to tell jokes in front of a football stadium for the people. Mm-hmm. Like, this regular jokes that are hit in, like, a venue full of 500 people, you can't tell that in front of, like, that many people. Like, the way you write jokes got to be different. And I think people look at him for, like, it, with Kevin Hart, it's not about the joke. More The funny part is how he tells the joke. Mm-hmm. Like, how he tells a story. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the character, mm-hmm. the way he acts it out. Like, mm-hmm. I got to... A crazy level of respect for him and how he's like the, the how he goes about the business of telling jokes mm-hmm. that's really what inspires me the most same with Jay like I love all of Jay's music that's my favorite rapper I love all his music but just how he is in the music business mm-hmm. like the business of making music that's what inspires me the most you made a good point about about Kevin Hart as well and you know a lot of his earlier material like he was working at like a shoe store and he was really hustling I, and I ended up checking out like one of your interviews and you were talking about you were working and it was very you know arduous work and you were lifting up a lot of like yeah, heavy big labor. boxes and heavy yeah. labor and you said that really helped you I feel like success and especially like that toil that like the, the toiling of the work and just that 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 that's that hard work and that sinew, you know, that also drives you to say, okay, what do I really want to do? At which point did you have where you felt a sense of, okay, I need to really stop what I'm doing and do this because this is what really drives me? Um, you reach a point where you're fed up. I was like a hamster in the wheel. I felt like, and all of, really, all of my success is rooted in failure. <laughs> like I've dropped out of college three times. I've had every. I did the warehouse job. I was a telemarketer. I worked at Walmart. I, uh, I when I was really strapped for cash, I would take like flyers for shows and go around and put them on people's cars. Like I did all like every which kind of way you can do it. And um, I remember I was listening to a, a motivational video from. Les Brown mm-hmm. and he was OG. yeah he's OG for sure um, and he was telling a story about he was I guess living out of like his office space or something like that and he was struggling to get his motivational career off the ground or whatever and whatever business he was office building he was in they had this policy like you couldn't stay in your room or whatever like whatever your place of work so he would have to like when everybody was gone, he would take a bath in, like, the bathroom and, like, all this stuff. So people in there, they weren't telling on them, but they was just clowning them every day, like, mm-hmm. man, you ain't gonna never be this, 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 and that. And he was detailing, like, the mental battle he was having in his head while getting that criticism from the people in that office building. And I was connecting that, me at this warehouse job, where I'm, like, I'm a rapper, and people was just, like, clowning, like, oh, okay, you don't look like a rapper. You look like a nigga moving boxes. <laughs> like, it's, like, this whole thing. Thing. And he was he was describing what was going on in my head so much, and like the fact that he kept going, and he, I got more into his story. Like he was called like uh, like he had a, like a learning disability, and he was in special classes and all this stuff, and he still persevered. And me and my girl was listening to it, and she was actually the one that was just like, "What if we quit our jobs?" And I don't know if she was like serious, but when she said, it, I was like, "Yeah, fuck this shit." <clears throat> And then I, I went, I put in my two weeks notice and I remember like my supervisor at the time, he was like, yeah, we're going to set it to the side for you. We know you, <laughs> he's like, we know you're going to come back, you know, you know, after you do your thing, you're going to come back when it don't work out. How come back chase your dream. Back. So, yeah, it was like, it was like this whole thing and people was just like, hey, you know, I got my little nephew, he doing that and he out there starving. So that, it's like yeah. all this shit and I, I used to really take that in like I'm going to show y'all. That shit is, is yeah. so hip hop. You understand? Even before you made a, a record, the fearlessness to reinvent yourself. Mm-hmm. That's that's complete fearlessness. Yeah. 
because it's just like you start realizing that's this great book that I always recommend to any any just creating just anybody that wants to do something great it's called um, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill and the book changed my life and there's a part in there about don't confuse temporary defeat with permanent failure mm. and like you know when you fail for example back to me when I played sports I was confusing me dropping the football like I'm a failure when that was just a temporary defeat mm -hmm. I should have just been more confident like oh I'm gonna catch you with one hand next time instead I'm when the ball was coming I used to be like oh I hope I don't drop it I hope I don't drop it but my my energy was focusing on dropping the football saying I hope I don't drop it is not the same thing as I'm gonna catch it mm -hmm. two completely different things mm -hmm. and and one as a man focused. thinker yeah like just mm -hmm. completely different or for example as a corner I'm like uh, I hope I don't get beat on an in and out or something like that. I would get beat on an in and out. Like mm -hmm. that, <laughs> that's what I was thinking about. Like the focus was me getting beat. So with, once I started um, realizing that everybody has fear, the only difference between people that make it and people that don't is the people that have fear, they just do it anyway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or the people that were putting their fears onto you. Right. Like, my nephew's out there starving. Good luck to you. Like, Good luck bro, to that, you. That's, like, yeah, that's nothing that don't got me. nothing to do with me. That's, that's right. your nephew. Right. I'm not your nephew. Real right. talk. Yeah. That's yeah. what you have to realize. Like, there's so many, there's so much power in our words and our energies that we have within ourselves. That, like, what we think or what we project to happen is going to happen. Yeah. So you thinking... I hope I don't catch this is gonna make, oh I hope I don't miss this mm -hmm. is going to make you that's miss this happen. that's yeah. what's gonna happen it's our mindset yeah. that make you react in the physical you know what I'm saying yeah, yeah. winners win you know I always uh, had this little thought recently was they, they say you know self doubt is like a killer like on, oh, on yeah. some shit like like you at the movie theater like self doubt is that old dusty nigga at the back of the movie theater like nigga you ain't gonna win you ain't gonna do shit mm -hmm. and it's like motherfuckers is really out there believing all of this bad stuff but like, I see you, like, with Law of Attraction, you put a lot of those positive, you know, seed, seedlings out into the world. Like, how how much influence do you have from a lot of the self-help stuff? Like, I know you mentioned Les Brown, but, like, do you you a rock lot. with, like, Brian Tracy, like, Brian Jim Brian Tracy, Rome, Jim Zig Rome, Ziglar, all them guys? Zig Ziglar. I knew uh, it, man. Tony <laughs> Robin, like, um, I had to listen to it every day. Like, that's all I had when I was broke. Mm -hmm. Like... Mm -hmm. it, I would just listen because I realized that everybody is brainwashed by something. We just got different soap. Right? I'm gonna hand you something right now. You was never broke. There you go. Right, but Depression. let me get. I'm gonna get into that in a second. So mm. when, so when I was listening to that, I realized that I don't let my bank account define my worth yes. and my value. Yes. So I used to walk around. I, I had this um, example I would use and I would ask this to everybody I would meet. I would say, if I gave you a trillion dollars for both of your eyeballs, would you give them to me? And everybody would say, no. Like, I want to be able to see. I'm like, okay, you already have things on you that you value at over a trillion dollars. So you can walk around like a trillionaire. Mm. So even though I didn't have any money, I would be walking around like I was the wealthiest person in the world. When mm. I shake your hand, I'm going to shake your hand like I'm the wealthiest man in the world. Mm. Like you're blessed to meet me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I feel like the self-help books, that really changed my whole life, which is why my first project after leaving the job was LOA. I said that you had never been broke before, and that's because you keep working. Yeah. And things at work aren't broken. Right? Yeah. Something that something that don't work, that's when, when something is broke. Yeah. When it does not work. You know, and I often I gotta remind myself of this because I go through something I call temporary recurring fiscal deficits. I gave it a long name. Yeah. So I can feel good about it. I just call it <laughs> financial aids. No, no, Magic Johnson had financial aids. All right. <laughs> that's pretty good. <laughs> temporary recurring fiscal deficits. This shit is temporary, but they are fucking recurring. Fiscal deficits. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. Internets. Jenkins and Jenkins has offices in your community. We speak your language. We accept your style of payment. EBT, debit card, food stamps. We even have a layaway program. You need law. You need Jenkins and Jenkins. Redes. Jenkins and Jenkins tienen oficinas en tu comunidad. Hablamos tu idioma. Aceptamos todo forma de pago. Efectivo. Layaway. EBT. Food stamps. 
Lo que sea. With your first consultation, we'll give you a chopped cheese sandwich. We're Jenkins and Jenkins. We're in your community. Jenkins and Jenkins, abogado de la ley. 1800-223-9797. I'm going to say congratulations. Oh, thank you, man. You know, and, and that by no means is, is a meaning that you settle or you stop. But, you know, you, you really have, you, you got your head on right. Thank you. And, I mean, salutes to your folks, man, for putting all that, that good music and that good layering on you. For sure. You know what I mean? And, and for you having a high enough pain threshold to play football into your senior year of high school. Oh, yeah. In the heat. Yeah, 5A yeah. school. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, you Two know, a days. it really... Prepared me like you know just for work ethic like no know, question. two a days was it was hot yeah <laughs> hot and then when you think about all the pads shoulder pads thigh pads knee yeah. pads and look, oh, that shit's hot yeah it's hot man I you, played football my freshman year that shit's hot man <laughs> you know, it's Texas I can only yeah, imagine yeah. Can you imagine and two a days yeah. yeah we weren't doing and, that and Dallas Texas yeah, yeah. I, f- I feel like and Bobby sweet tea. I feel like Bobby's like the answer to J Cole's 1985. <laughs> Like when he's talking about these new generations and the responsibility of the men that look like me and you and this is that. Yeah. I, I and then you have, like, this visual. I, I, I want to go back to Dallas when he was talking about the visuals for this Like Me video. You got the DMX scene with the blood all over you. You got the hank, the, the noose around your neck. You got the beating of the cop. Like, you took it all the way. And it was like, and to hear you talk about you have a responsibility, I feel like, you are the answer. You are the calling of what he was saying in that verse or in that song when he was calling for this new generation to finally pick it up. Yeah, to step it up. Yeah, so Appreciate I feel like that, that was dope. Thank I think, you. Thank I, think, you. I, think, I think also, too, uh, again, it goes back to the platforms that are paying attention to that, too. You know, um, which, like I said, I'm, I was shocked to know that, you know, um, not, not shocked to that, that he's on Def Jam, but just the fact that you never know what the agenda is, or if there's one, you know what I mean, based on all the wild shit that's going on out here. But, um, you know, I, I'm excited, you know, me personally. Have you ever crossed paths with uh, Bun B? Um, I mean, I know he's not from Dallas, but, you know. Oh, we, we haven't actually had a conversation. We've been in the same spot, like, a couple times, yeah. but we haven't has, had an actual conversation yet. But that's the OG, though. I like, could definitely yeah. see you guys doing some 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 groundwork. Yeah, most not, definitely. Not even, not, not even music related, just, you know, champion for the people. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's how yeah, him and, from Texas Auto. Yeah. Texas is the bottom. Yeah, him and a, um, and a lot of other rappers from Houston, they've been doing a lot of great work. Him, um, Trey. Yeah, Trey the Truth. Trey. Like, um, I did a, um, a Hurricane... Um, Harvey Benefit show It was in San Antonio Last yeah. year But the money went to Like Trade the Truth's Charity or whatever yeah, And like yeah. He was really out there Like Dope. You know Breaking Going in yeah, yeah Going in Like I got a lot of respect for them And I can't wait to Actually meet them And continue to build with them King keep yeah. in mind now Yeah Bobby Sessions Is a descendant Of Of the people who Had to wait till Juneteenth Yeah mm. Yeah for for those for the slow ones out there, what is Juneteenth? Juneteenth is is part of the everlasting black legend. Juneteenth is a celebration of the people that made the transatlantic slave trade trip. People that made it over the boat. Mm-hmm. The boat was like a hundred days of travel. Hundred days of travel, chained up with niggas, pissing, shitting, throw up and dying, the whole thing. Yeah. So who made it? Who who made that hundred days? And the slaves that was here, that was our. Hold on a second. I'm just saying who the people who could make it from there in that condition that made it here. You've already whittled down uh, a portion of the population. Yeah. At least a portion of people on that boat. Yeah. People that was jumping off the boat. And, the people is yeah. dying, man. Crazy. Dying. Dying, dying, mm. and then sick, and then man. to be in Texas, mm. and then to find yourself in that part of the country, <laughs> understanding the trip you already made, and now you're in the Badlands here. Such the Badlands that a whole war goes on on the continent that you're on, and you don't find out about it. There was no Twitter back then. If there was Twitter during the Civil War, maybe people would be like, "Oh shit." I've been emancipated. <laughs> uh, you know? Yo. 
<laughs> there was no fucking Twitter. No, no black Twitter. We were talking like, about this all day, like, yo, but, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. motherfuckers had to wait. Yeah. What would have been Harriet Tubman's tweet? Yo. <laughs> yo, Texas is really out there. <laughs> 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 nah, it's it's really out there, and I feel like that you have an understanding of Dallas that like would just change the way you see the city. Like you see it completely differently than someone from New York would see it. Yeah, for um, sure. They're recruiting Dallas police in New York. Do you think that's a smart move? Mm. They're recruiting Dallas police. And yeah, I saw heard of that. There's a serious operation to recruit uh, cadets for um, mm. the Dallas Police Department at the school I graduated from, John Jay. Um, College of Criminal Justice But my conspiracy theory is That they only had them there Because they all have guns So it's, prevent, it's to prevent school shooters um, hmm, That's an interesting perspective um, oh, man. Do I think that's a good move? I'm not sure I do know that There has been a <laughs> lot of Police officers that's been Scared to serve in Dallas Because unlike Some other places You know a cop got killed in Dallas. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think another one got popped the other day in Dallas. Like, they shoot back in Dallas. Mm. Like, you it's, know, open ca- it's open carry in Texas, period. Yeah. yeah. But it's just like, you can't... Dallas is not a place where... Put it like this. We've had our share of police retire. My cousin got killed by Dallas Police Department six years ago. Um, case, yeah. Um, but ever since that cop got killed in 20... No, for 16, 15, there's been a lot less um, killings out there. And also, when when my cousin got killed, um, it was in South Dallas, and a riot broke out, and the riot was so wild, like, that a lot of police officers got scared, like, super scared. A lot of them quit. Like, they just couldn't deal with it. And then when the cop... Um, when the cop got killed a few years later, wasn't the co- same cop that killed my cousin to be clear for the podcast. Um, a lot of uh, a lot of members of law enforcement they're just like terrified and they can't deal with it anymore. And they're not getting cops really don't get paid a lot either. So the stuff that you have to deal with for that money is uh, not worth it to a lot of people. So I'm sure that that uh, they're at a point where they're trying to do whatever they can. To, Damn. Now, yeah. now think about this now. Then, then that means. Basically, a, a, probably a national program bringing Utah police no. to Dallas, bring Dallas police to New York, bring, you know, New York, New Jersey police cadets to yeah, that's Chicago. That's mm-hmm. weird, man. Yeah, well, I, I want to research more than that. Why. That's weird. Because Dallas resident police in Dallas know the people. There you go. And they say, oh, man, this is not, maybe it's not my neighbor, but this is, I know this person. Like, I, I know this person's language. I know this, and. And, and in some cases. Some okay, cases. okay. In some cases. Well, isn't the, the problem in New York was always that you had cops from. Well, the problem in New York became that. Be, the that problem in New York was... became several things. One, it became the fact that, yes, they no longer recruited people from inside the five boroughs to right. police the city area. It okay. was pulling people from out of state. From Jersey. other parts of the state, other didn't understand all the culture, the region really, pulling people from the region, but also the the context, <laughs> the context of the black male in this city changed. The black male in the city was seen as a as a vicious problem, as a super predator. Yeah, and that's that's not just this city, but that was everywhere. It that was everywhere black males were. Yeah. So we had a politician, Rudolph Giuliani, who said, "Hey, listen." Your black male problem, I'm going to stop that shit. And corporations said, what? <laughs> Fuck that. Hell yeah. Stop that shit. Push that shit underground so that we can buy some of this real estate. You know what I mean? And, and, and get this bread. Yeah. Push this underground. At so Dallas? many so many ways to take that. Yeah. Listen. That was such a play on words, Dallas. You sure you're not a rap? No, no. He no, got I don't bars. Write, I don't write bars. You said that? That was a metaphor. But like... Yeah. <laughs> but, but Bobby, I'm glad you're part of the continuity of the people pushing back against that supremacy. Absolutely. Like I feel I feel it would be healthy for every member of law enforcement to watch my video. If you're a good police officer that, that shouldn't offend you. Mm-hmm. Well, again, 
it goes back to the you know I use, I'll use the Colin Kaepernick situation where you know we all know the reason why he took the knee was to uh, highlight the social injustices and justices period sure. um, among people of color and as they were happening in real time um, but the the bait and switch was the American flag which that never was the issue right um, I, I mean. I, the intelligent ones get get it, but also the ones that will see that video and then draw up a whole new narrative. That was those are my that's the concern I have because it always happens, right? And then the narrative gets blown out of proportion, and then that becomes the the, the story of the headline. Yeah. And if we don't support you, or the the voices, the, the, the voices of power don't stand next to you and don't support you. Your message gets lost. Yes. You know, or gets you know uh, replaced by that narrative. Yeah. You know. You know that's something I've been talking about with literally my team today. Like just a point of emphasis. Like people like um, we we have this thing with um, we talk about like field niggas and house niggas <laughs> and stuff like that, right? Like people that will um, people that will shit on their own community for their own personal gain it was like a survival tactic and thing right. like back in slavery like right. you know if I kiss my master's ass then you know maybe I'll be a little bit safer maybe you know my livelihood will be more protected and fuck with them in the field like trying to get all the cloud points yeah that's like this whole thing and um when addressing that I feel like that's why it's so important for people like Colin Kaepernick the people that is in a position of power and a position influences do is making millions of dollars and was like you know what I'll sacrifice all this f- to to spread light on on all these issues that people keep sweeping under the rug that's why I got so much respect like an infinite amount of respect for Colin him Kaepernick. and and also yeah Colin Kaepernick he, he said his eyes was worth a trillion dollars <laughs> yeah mm. so what's a million to a trillion mm nothing pennies yeah. literally and um, and also I think um, as a people we have to continue to get educated on the enemy like it's always somebody spinning like that's what that's what they're good at they're always spinning they're always like turning the story and even if you want to flip it into the flag it's still fucked up right. like we act like that everybody forget the second verse of the Star Spangled Banner <laughs> Yeah, what that directly is related to. It's talking about slavery. It was written by Francis Scott Key, a slave owner. It's the whole the whole it's actually disrespectful to tell a black person to stand up and put their hand over their heart during the national anthem. Like I take it as disrespect. Like anytime I'm if I'm at a sporting event, I am never standing up for that. Ever. Ever. Under no circumstances. And it and I think People should be grateful that Colin Kaepernick is just taking a knee. People act like he went and put the flag on the 50-yard line and took a shit on it. Like, he took a knee. When Tim Tebow was taking a knee, it was all good. There's a lot of schools where students that kneel for the flag will just be immediately expelled. Yeah. A lot. And that's insane. Like, it, it talks about slavery in the second verse of the song. Like, we just don't sing it at the events because we, we care about football too much. Which, which, which also highlights a larger issue, which is after all these years, all this pain, we're not having the conversations about it. We're just creating these headlines. When I say we, just people, creating these headlines and not dealing with the layers. Yeah. We're just we're glossing over the layers and not dealing with the why. Yeah, and that's a huge problem because as we continue to go along, look what Louisiana happened. You know, black man was going to take some debris out the road. You know, for safety, he was a good being a good Samaritan, and a white trucker just ran him over. Right? Why? Like, where is this coming from? Yeah. You know, microaggressions, man. I told you where it came from, King. Oh, here we go. They found a cave in France, and they had bones of deer. And babies, and it wasn't arranged in a ritual manner. It wasn't arranged in a respectful manner. It was arranged as these shits was cooked and eaten. If you would eat your children, mm. what else would you do? 
What else would you do if you would eat your children? We got to have these conversations, man. And it, and it might be uncomfortable for some, but that's the they only way. If we're going to be har- har- harmonious <laughs> at, at some point, it's either going to be two, it's two options. Hey, listen, we don't even have to be harmonious. Are we going to be honest? That, well, that, well, that's the start. People yeah. don't like to deal with it, man. That's the, well, that's the issue. It's a lot of hurt and uncomfortability in knowing the fact that we talk is. about ancestry, right? Yo, listen, if my ancestors did some fucked up shit, all right. That don't mean I'm doing the fucked up shit, but let's have the conversation about it. And I'm just giving you context because that's how I am with it. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, what the fuck? Why are we scared to have this? Yeah, you got tact and then because you have just actual truth. And, and, and it's so important to... And you know what? Any anytime you can ever be in a room, you can just be comfortable to tell the truth. Like I was watching this MSNBC special, and they were talking about racism in America, and they were talking about the the bias trainings and just a lot of things. And it's like you're saying this time and time again, and and it, and it leads you to believe, okay, when you have that real conversation, it's gonna be, am I being slighted? Am I being held in in some type of very contemptful manner where? Oh, you guys are just playing the race card. You guys are just... A lot of times, that's why I've been very happy as well. Not happy, but it's just like when you see the stuff and it's documented and it's on camera, it's like, now what are we talking about? You see what's happening, and it's happening over and over again. It's systemic. Dude, they and, change the narratives and even, even the shit that we see. is almost like they... <laughs> Like they'll tell you, oh no, that that. But it's but it's so. The, the, thank but, goodness again, right. again getting back to you, Bobby. Session, I'm sorry, we we here. This thing is called talk detection. We talking and we talking. These motherfuckers don't never shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm guilty of that I'm one of them. But again, we'll 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 come back to you, and how music is seen before it's even heard. Yeah. And here we are, visceral minded. We are people that seeing is believing. How often yeah. motherfuckers say that? Yeah. How ill must Stevie Wonder Ray Charles be though? All the shit they did without having to see. In the business. Yeah. Well, well you know, because you know Stevie Wonder put his finger on some things. Oh shit. Ray mm. Charles too. Mm. You know how they? You know how they knew it was good? The smell. The smell, Bobby. Ism. Uh, can I tell you something? The sound of something. Yeah. But the smell of something. <laughs> yeah. Like before you taste something, you smelling it. It's old creep that's, Philosophies that's, Yeah I'm not, Am I lying? No, you're, you're not lying, lying man. I'm sure I'm not lying You ever smell, not, you ever smell something like you're Get him out of here I'm just saying <laughs> I'm just saying That's something that's That's, that's, that's primal That's something that, that That goes into the The, the very Orifice Crerifice The, the oh, bottom Of that brain Talking What that smell is Yeah Alright you're about to smell Some things Bobby <laughs> But take your time you already know what smells good, what smells good, so don't... I do. Yeah. Yeah, they smell good, it's gonna come out. <laughs> <laughs> internets, internets, yo, we, we in here chilling. Bobby Sessions, Def Jam artist out of Dallas. Yeah. Pushing buttons, so, being challenging, counterculture. Again, like I said, I don't want to compare you to nobody I've heard before. I, and I'm excited to say that. Yeah. I'm excited that you're part of the continuity of people that speak truth. Mm. Like groups like Public Enemy. Like artists like Wise Intelligent, like KRS One. Mm. I'm I'm glad that you're part yeah. of that continuity, that ray of light, but I don't want to compare you to that nobody because I'm excited to just see, you know, how you're gonna bring your information, you're gonna bring your, your, your content to the people. Tell me, um also you you, you grew up uh, with a little bit of internet action, more so than I did, sure. for for exchanging information. What, what was your first social media site? Were you a MySpace kid? My first social media site, Zanga. 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 Zanga was like Zanga was before MySpace. It was X or Z. I don't even remember. I think Z. Z. I don't remember. That was a long time ago. Z. Uh, Zanga. Zanga. Zanga was before MySpace, after like AIM, AOL, AIM. Okay. Yeah. Okay. After the AIM, AIM yeah. chat rooms. In. Yeah, Zanga. Any, any chat line? Any chat line history? Nah, nah. Okay, no, no creep shit. Nah, no creep. <laughs> All right, that's no, that's no Bobby, yeah. brother Christopher. No creep shit in here. Yeah, he's gotta go. Yeah. He's yeah. gotta go. King he creep gotta go. As he walks Zang- away. Zanga. So I mean, 
uh, with Zanga, uh, Zanga's worldwide, right? So you're able to connect to people <laughs> everywhere, Saudi Arabia, Australia. Where? Nah, I, I don't know the reason. I was too young. Like I was like elementary school, middle school. Like okay. I, I don't remember okay. that much. But uh, you just discovered that shit. Yeah, uh, Zanga was just like the shit where I was at. Um, and then what had porn on it? Nah, okay. like Zanga was. I don't even remember the format. Like, I remember, like, when you create a page, you had, like, a song for that page. Okay. Oh, I mean, I just, yeah. Okay. No, it wasn't music related. Wait, I thought it was, like, a blog. A like, it was almost like a blog. Yeah, like, you like just a personal post stuff. blog. Like, you have, like, music. Like a blog, you have, like, a layout. I remember a song that was popular when I made, well, I think, um... The Nelly Grill song was the song I had oh, on my Zanga, yeah. <laughs> uh, so that, but that didn't last too long. Then transition from that into MySpace. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that was tight. Uh, having the layout, you always had a layout, so like whatever. I guess what today would be a Woman Crush Wednesday. Mm-hmm. That would be a thing. Top like, eight. Yeah, 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 yeah. Top, top eight. eight. No, no, like no, beat, no, beat, because yeah, top, top eight brought top a lot of pain. Was, top, top eight was a thing. But top eight brought a lot of pain though to, to number nine. But that's still, yeah, it's, but yeah. it's still eight choices. You don't now Women Crush Wednesday. That's one person. No, nah, no Women Crush Wednesday could be a whole day. Unless you, yeah, um, you got time. <laughs> no, I'm saying not not your top eight. I'm saying my space. Maybe you have like a layout. And I'm right. sure the way people use MySpace was different for our age range, which I was like 12, 13. That's true. I think yeah. who who is uh, as a kid, everybody wanted to smash like Melissa Ford or oh, you know somebody like that. So you would make her like your the layout. Background. So when somebody went to your MySpace, they're like, "Oh, this dude, you want Melissa Ford?" Or "Oh, he want you know blah blah blah." Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, you was nasty with the coding. Yeah, nah, the nah. HTML game was, was lit? No, nah, it was not lit. <laughs> <laughs> it was trash. Trash. Because that's what Cass was doing back in the day, not Yo, even knowing. Right? Really the coding. cheat code pages. I, they had like the cheat code. I guess maybe so. I didn't know. Maybe I was, yeah, I don't I know. I learned how to code off of that shit. <laughs> yeah. I used to try to get they, like free uh, backgrounds and tweak it a little mm-hmm. bit. Mm-hmm. It should look weird. They need to bring MySpace back. They bring his sidekicks back. MySpace was popping, man. MySpace was lit. MySpace right. was lit. That's, yeah. that's why I first uh, heard Cuddy on MySpace. Yeah. Uh, oh wow! Jay yeah. Electronica. Jay Electronica. Yeah. Through, he broke through. Yeah. On MySpace. MySpace. Yeah. Oh, that's crazy. But, but and what's the name too? Soldier, Soldier Boy. Soldier Boy. Oh, MySpace. Yeah. He was like the king. The My greatest story yes, of the time. Period. King yeah. Period. Yeah. He, yeah. No close second. Let's yeah. not forget yeah. about Lil B. The come up. His MySpace come up was ill. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but Lil B still, no, Soldier Boy crushed no, yeah. his MySpace. Yeah. How he was able to, to he shut it down. capitalize and maximize. Uh, his whole uh, career uh, was uh, built off that uh, MySpace. MySpace and the ringtones. Uh, and the ringtone. Yeah. 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 Ringtone. Yeah. Ringtone. Yeah. 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 Man, yeah. ringtone rap, man. Ringtone rap. That was a thing. I had a thing. Yeah. I had a thing. Don't don't be Shout out of... to Chameleon that greatest ringtone song song ever. Uh, oh, Riding Dirty. Rod and Dirty. Dirty. Yeah. Texas history yeah. right there, yeah. Damn. Rolling. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta change, gotta change. <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah. Just, just, just to pay that. homage, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But yeah, now he in the tech world. Well, I never know. Away. Away. He could be investing <laughs> in the next streaming service oh, that'll take over. I bet he is. I heard he's like a monster in Silicon Valley. Yeah, right I think now. he's killing right now. Killing. Yeah, he's doing he's his thing. He's half a Billy right now. Ooh, I can't Ooh. wait till he gets up to a Billy. Really? Yeah. Hmm. I can't wait to get some to a bill and then fucking Jordan will finally fucking let him get a pair of sneakers. <laughs> yeah, he got to uh, get that done. That was the worst That was story. so disrespectful. That's yeah. epic. Yeah. That's epic. You know? And he had that record, I'm in love with my money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Black Planet, though, man. Black Planet was the, was the first online catfish shit. Yeah, yeah. Crazy catfish. Crazy Black catfish Planet. was going on, yeah. You know, if Crop you saw, game if crazy. She was, if she was pretty... It was a dude. <laughs> okay. Black Planet. Yeah. yeah. Black be safe. Right. Internet, be safe. Yeah, be safe, yeah. Additional safety, yeah. guys. Be safe, yeah. Be safe. <laughs> so, 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 Bobby, tell me something. You got crazy. These conversations take the turns. They, they it's be like, short turns, like, like, be, They be like, fuck a U-turn. These shits be V-turns and shit. Get, get, the <laughs> get the strap. Get the strap. Get the strap. <laughs> Hashtag get, get the strap. Get the strap man. <laughs> so, so tell us about it. What's next for you, man? What, what, what you got lined up, man? What should we be expecting, looking for? Talk to us. Um, bring up the. Yeah, so um Yeah, we ain't hold no secrets. Hey, no, nah, I got <laughs> Shout out to Def Jam. What up, Def Jam? Hey man. Um, <laughs> they got cleaned up when they went in the big building. Yo, we got I feel like you should I didn't even recognize my man right there. My man used to be when he was shady, they was all degenerate. 
<laughs> they went to the big building. They clean. I didn't even recognize my man. Yo, you know, you know he had face tattoos. Yo, you know, back in shape. How you get that shit taken off? Yeah, I feel like it, it, it was so much. It he had so a much. neck tattoo. <laughs> I, how do you get the shit taken off? Yeah. It might have been Nigga, Hannah. Nigga, how do you get the shit lazed off, probably? <laughs> wait, wait. You know what you said it might have been? It might have been Hannah. Oh, okay. <laughs> nah, 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 he had a deep... Nah, I don't think... He had welts. He had one of them neck tattoos. <laughs> you, you, Done hey, at the bodega. Uh, what, you, what are you? Uh, <laughs> Puerto Ricans don't put Hannah on anybody. <laughs> <laughs> Hell no. Yeah, I told you. He had that stuff. Shit was covered with a knife. <laughs> so, <laughs> wait, was Bobby, what's next? Um, so, um, I got my next single, Pick a Side, dropping um, mm. June 13th. Uh, that, that, so, you're going to keep the foot on the neck? Oh, yeah. We're not playing around. Pick a side. Visual? Uh, yeah, visual. Mm. visual. What's, what's the side we, we're choosing from? No, don't, don't, don't hold on for a second. Yeah. You Just got, get ready. Get 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 in. Uh, yeah, get you got to tell him after it drops. Yeah, 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 you got to tune in June 13th, but when... Okay. Um, that, that's right here. Less than 60 seconds in the record, it's be very fucking clear. All mm. right. Yeah. Mm. That's a bet. Yeah. That's a Some bet. of the production you got on there. Um, The bulk of... Uh, the production on the project is done by Sick With It. That was producer, same person oh, that yeah, like me. Come on. Shout out to Sick With It, man. Yeah, Sick I With It. It. What up, Jay Hatch? Yeah. Um, yeah, shout out I Stand It. Uh, yeah, so um, Sick With It also got that one I Stand It, Brown Royal, young yes. producer. Um, he has a lot of production on the record. Um, and my girl slash label mate on High Stand It, Zaya, has some production, song, uh, songwriting, and some vocals on the record as well. Seven. It's only seven tracks, right? Yes. Mm. Yes. Does that have anything to do with Kanye? No, mine was made first. Damn right. Pick a side. <laughs> Pick a side. No, <laughs> <laughs> I had to ask. No, I saw good. Yo, um, before we close out, man, uh, I would be I would be remiss if I didn't ask you, and it might be generic, but I'm curious. Who's your top five? Ever. Your top five. Um, J M, Pac. Wait, hold on a sec. What did I say? J. J. M. Um, Pac. Okay. And no particular and, and this is yeah, your top five just for right now in this space. Because again, it can change. You got you got too much information in your brain. Yeah. Uh <laughs> but you could add cold train. If you said cold train, I'd be fine with that. Uh-uh. uh uh-uh. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh J M Pac. Um Andre three thousand and Biggie tied Kendrick. Mm. We cheated. Yeah. We cheated. Yeah. Cheated on that. We with that. We with that. A lot of Gemini we representation we in there, guys. We with that. Yeah. Yeah. We with that. Dope. Yeah. Dope. Yeah. Talk attack. Dope. 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 Five or six will bar you down for sure. Internet. Get, yeah. yeah. get ready. A lot of bars. Get ready for Bobby Sessions. Get ready. For hey, thank y'all for having me on your platform, man. Bobby Sessions. Thanks for being here. No questions. Congratulations, brother. And again, keep keep the foot on the neck. Yes, sir. Internet is Bobby Sessions video like me can be found on YouTube. It can be found on Vimeo. It it can be ripped off of YouTube and you can put it on your phone <laughs> that you can watch it all the time. Because YouTube doesn't let you fucking watch shit sometimes and do other things. But please make sure you tune in, log on, and visualize this young man here, Bobby Sessions. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Much yeah. love. Yeah, yeah, much yeah, love. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, Talk and Text, thank you. Good to see y'all tonight. I'm glad y'all made the call time early tonight. I appreciate that. I'm trying. I, I see some I'm big trying. things coming with this uh, Talk and Texture podcast. A King, as always, man. Oh, Happy New Year, brother. Thank you. Happy New Year, man. Gemini season. Yes, indeed. Gemini's. Yes, indeed. Let's rock this thing for 12 it's, months. It's our right? season. Facts. All right, engineer, super engineer. Brother Christopher? King Creek. All right. Yeah, creep. keep that creep like Creep Incorporated. <laughs> Professional Creep. <laughs> He's a creep with a job. Like a creep Lords. <laughs> Congrats to Barky Jesus again. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Oh, Congrats. thank you. Congrats. Congrats. You got Congrats. the young tassel. And, uh, All right. The, the diploma's in the mail. Big, big up to Haitian Miguel. <laughs> we catch you on the next <laughs> joint. Into yeah. Nets. Into Nets. It's called Talk and Texture. Athletic sash, too. Good to be talking to y'all. The Talk and Texture podcast is a presentation of the Loudspeakers Network, where we always say rest in peace to Combat Jack. Episodes are executive produced by A. King and Dallas Penn. All episodes are engineered superbly by Brother Christopher. 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 By Brother Christopher.